I stand before you as a former perpetrator and former victim of domestic violence. <sighs> no, matter, no matter how many times I've said that, it, it never gets any easier. These journeys are, are challenging, they're hard. It's definitely not just a walk in the park. <laughs> Walking the healing path is who I am, it's my life. It was after basically my own bout with domestic violence. It was through that process, that healing process, where I just really wanted to give back. And so I said, you know, I think I, think I really want to do a walk. I imagine my dad was probably thinking that it was maybe a couple of miles or, you know, a, a walk around the block or whatever, but uh, he goes, okay, well, where do you want to go? And I said, I think I want to walk to Phoenix. And he says, and he says, Phoenix, from where? And I said, from here, from Winter Rock, which is, it's over 300 miles. He's like, are you crazy? <laughs> and um, that was the beginning. Savannah Lafontaine Graywin, who's eight months pregnant, has gone missing. Olivia Lone Bear, who went missing October 25th. There is an epidemic of violence against Native women that just isn't being prosecuted and investigated effectively. and everything was fine. It wasn't until, I think, maybe right before, um, I think we found out when I was pregnant with my second son. And just things kind of changed. And it wasn't until the first time that I was strangled that, um, that that was when I realized, you know, I think I have to find a way to leave. You almost feel like, I'm their own, you know, I'm their only hope. I'm the only one that does, that loves them, that can change them. As a victim and survivor, you kind of put everybody else's feelings before yours. And that, that, that's something that has to change. A Native women are seeing domestic violence at such a higher rate. My youngest child is, is a daughter. And so my work a lot is because of her. You know, I'm, I'm looking out for her future. Indigenous women and girls across the nation are intensely vulnerable to violence. So much so that murder is the third leading cause of death in Native women. Nationwide epidemic of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. No one knows exactly how many Native American women have been murdered or gone missing. You do not believe this was sheer accident? No, I don't. I was walking for uh, Laverta Sorrell, my brother-in-law, sister. And um, so I couldn't stop. And this movement mustn't stop. It has to continue. We started this walking healing path years ago when I was younger. Now I'm a little older, so it takes me a while to keep up with them on the walks. <laughs> We're on day three, leg three. A walk means a lot to me because, you know, you have a lot of time when you're walking distances. You got a lot of things on your mind you're thinking. And I was just thinking that every step that I took, all those miles, don't even count the number of women that's been hurting. And I'm, of course, thinking about me, myself, what I did. What turned me around was the night of January 1st, 2003. And I remember it just like it was, like it was yesterday. And this is the mother of my children. We were just not in a very good place. We, we, were, uh, we were partying a lot, there was alcohol around. And I knew what was about to, to happen, it was his routine. She had uh, 
you know, grab my, my, my glasses off of my face. And what happened next was the, it was scary. Um, you know, because I, I physically struck her, I hit her. And I remember thinking to myself, what did I just do? So at that moment, it's instantaneously, I flash back to that little boy being comforted by my mom. She says, what you just saw, what your dad just did was very wrong. You don't do that when you get older. Little did I know as, as that little boy making those promises that I would break all of them, every one of them. But it's something that I must own. It's something that I must take responsibility for because it's part of me. It's part of my journey. I am not proud of it. Not proud of it at all. At all. Me and uh, my kid's mother, you know, we went through therapy together at one point. That was one of the first things that we had to overcome was forgiving each other. And so I know, you know, within that, she's forgiven me. I've forgiven everything that we went through, you know, and, and that's hard. That's a hard thing to do, but it has to be done. Men being this, in this movement is vital because we all need to work together. Uh, we, my dad and I, just need to set that example. And I try to do that every day with my sons. I have two boys. So as a father and son thing, we've done things to our family, and now we want to make up for it. It took many years for me to realize that forgiveness, I never did go through that process until my son, like he said, that he forgave me. And it hit me there that, you know what? I've never forgiven myself for what I did. I carried this on my shoulder, everything that I did, and it's right there in front of me. But when he forgave me, then that's when I started to forgive myself. Over the past 17 years, my father and I have heard from so many individuals, so many wonderful individuals, hearing of families who have lost loved ones to domestic violence, Families who are searching for their loved ones who have been missing now for 20 years and they're still searching. Individuals who have been raped. Those stories are never easy to hear. They weigh heavily on our hearts every time we hear them. But those stories are why we walk. There's a phrase in Indian country that when a Native American woman goes missing, she disappears twice. Once in life and once in the news. I've known John since I was, um, I met him in high school and it wasn't until um, I started my job at at a former domestic violence organization, working um, there, our paths met again. He was a big part of my healing process, going through my own um, domestic violence. He, he was a really good friend, a really good listener, a really good advocate for me, um, dealing with all that. That is what a lot of our women, a lot of our men, and yes, a lot of our children face every day, is the possibility of being abused and, of course, being abused. And that is why we walk. Walking has been my means to, to carry a message, a really, really important message. And so walking the only path, that's, that's just become who I am. That's my life. I do it not only for me, but I do it for my people. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.